Hello and welcome back to Zach Talks Hawks. My name is Zach and this is the place where we talk Seattle Seahawks football, at least here on Mondays. Um, as you can see, our content schedule is down here in the corner and uh, we got a lot going on here on the channel. Uh, I explained on Twitter last week that we were going through some growing pains with an OBS update that uh, corrupted two different files from uh, NCAA and Madden 12 Custom League content for you. I'm working on getting that fixed. I'm going to have to do voiceovers and stuff. But and I know for a fact that at least this portion of what we do here on the channel is safe and sound as uh, I don't have to deal with video capture and things like that. But let's get right to it as this is the place where we're going to talk about the week that was for Seattle Seahawks football as Seattle goes into New Orleans and gives it their best shot. And you can see uh, that Seattle falls to one game below 500 as they lose to the Saints 39-32. to And this was a very winnable game for Seattle, especially in the second half, especially late in this game as Seattle actually pulled out to a lead uh, only for the defense to very quickly give it all back uh to the the saints and uh we're going to take a look at our rundown for today's show and, and just see uh what my takeaways are from this contest uh we're going to talk about the the defensive nightmare oh now my dog wakes up and comes over oh now you're gonna lay on your pillow okay well go lay down go lay down nope he's taking his good old time but anyway, uh, my dog's trying to be the star of the show. But anyway, we got uh, some uh, takeaways from this week's game where we have a, a defensive nightmare for Seattle. We're going to unpack that and, and see where that takes us in terms of our conversation and our analysis for the season moving forward. Also... Going to talk about the very real reality uh, as news broke today. Uh, Rashad Penny is out for the season with uh, a broken fibula and um, various other injuries are, are done to Rashad Penny. So um, it's unfortunate. Thank you. Thank you, dog, for finally laying down. But uh, it's unfortunate, but we get to see here uh, maybe a new offensive system with Kenneth Walker III uh, coming out and being running back one. Uh, he certainly looks sharp at times against New Orleans. And then uh, we're going to talk about the coaching scenario and, and why I think this is now all on Pete Carroll to fix. And if he doesn't fix it, uh, there very well could be changes uh, in – our locker room come next season uh first things first we're gonna take a look here at the stats for uh for this game as you can see uh Taysom hill's name is all over the place on here we're going to talk about him in just a moment but i do want to focus on once again the quarterback play from geno smith uh geno smith continues to impress he continues to not be the problem with this team and he threw three touchdowns and uh didn't have any interceptions there were a couple throws that definitely could have been picks today but um 16 to 25 and really just continues to play at a very efficient level of quarterback play that very well could affect how seattle approaches this next draft in seeing what their quarterback of the future looks like uh, maybe they got the quarterback of the now with geno smith and maybe you take a more developmental guy and, and try to mentor him under geno i don't know we're way too early in the season to start speculating about that in any meaningful way but there are a couple stats here that uh that i i do want to focus on and that's uh kenneth walker coming in in relief for rashad penny gets eight carries he averages 11 yards a pop uh but that is skewed with a massive uh 69 yard run for a touchdown uh in the second half of this ball game and uh, I'm curious to see Walker's explosiveness uh, continue into the season, but uh, definitely a, a big hole to fill as uh, I think we're going to start seeing a little bit more of Walker and Dallas, and I think Homer's coming back from an injury, so that'll be a, a very much needed boost to this running back room for Seattle. Taking a look here on uh, the Saints side of things, those rushing numbers should step out to us right away, right? Taysom Hill, nine carries, 112 yards, three touchdowns for him. 
Alvin Kamara didn't even get a touchdown today, but he still got 103 yards rushing. Uh, just just terrible rushing defense from Seattle. We're going to get to that here at the end of the show, but uh, ultimately uh, this is going to be a big storyline for Seattle moving forward, right? Trying to adjust to life without Rashad Penny. Rashad Penny is really coming into his own. I uh, had a couple of really explosive plays this game that got me excited for, okay, well, maybe maybe Penny is the guy and maybe he can uh, lead us in a balanced rushing attack that this offense needs to thrive on. It's been talked a lot on this channel how you can't just let it all uh, uh, let it all rest on Geno Smith's shoulders. He's not that kind of quarterback. But if you give him a good running game, he's pretty efficient. Well, Rashad Penny's out. He uh, is traumatically injured his leg, and I don't know this. This might be it for Rashad Penny, right? Um, Seattle just has a away with not finding their running backs and uh, we had Chris Carson go out for an injury uh, obviously his career shortened because of it Rashad Penny hasn't lasted more than six games in in a season in his NFL career very talented when he's healthy unfortunate though that he hardly is ever healthy so um, I'm, I'm very curious to see where Seattle goes with uh, life without Rashad Penny, but but ultimately this this is what I wanted to talk about with you uh, about this is the game that Taysom Hill just came out and uh, just dominated a Seattle defense that was that was ripe for the for the taking. Uh, Andy Dalton pretty efficient on offense, but cannot provide some of the schematic problems that T Hill can bring towards any given team. Um, he even returned kickoffs on Sunday, so that was bizarre to see. And uh, again, he he can do it all. And there's about two or three games a season where Taysom Hill does this kind of stuff and he earns another contract or he earns another big signing bonus. And everybody's all, all hyped up over Taysom Hill. I'm sure everybody's going to start picking him up in fantasy this week and go, oh, look at him. He's back. Um, but he does this like two or three times a year and just has a career game. And um, then he'll fade back and he won't be as, as big of a centerpiece in their offense. I think this has a lot to do with, with the Jameis Winston injury. Uh, you can't put it all on uh, Andy Dalton to make that happen on offense. But uh, the, the fact of the matter is that, well, <laughs> you're not going to have a, a, a decent team if uh, you're going to rely on Taysom Hill that way every week. It just happened to be against a really terrible Seahawk defense. And this is where I really want to start talking about our takeaways for the show today. Um, this team's awful on defense. And uh, when we took a look at this team in the offseason, all of our focus was on how rough this offensive unit was going to be with Geno Smith at the helm and saying, well, they don't really have a whole lot of weapons, right? They have Metcalf, they have Lockett, but who else do they have? They don't even have a guy to throw the ball to them. That's not the storyline in Seattle at all anymore. Uh, a lot of fans were pointing to this defense as a young unit that, uh, right, that got rid of certain players over these last few years that, that kind of linked them to the Seahawks of old. And, and, and the last thing to go was Bobby Wagner. So, so now you got like Cody Barton and Jordan Brooks and Puna Ford's going to come into his own. And you have uh, Tariq Woolen out there in, in corner coverage, which, he got another pick uh, this week, but, um, y you know, th th these guys are going to get younger and quicker and faster, and they're awful. I mean, this defense is awful, and to be frank, I don't know if Jamal Adams fixes this defense. This defense had these same issues when Jamal Adams was playing. Uh, they give up a tremendous amount of yardage. Sure, you can put Adams into the box, and that's another body up in there to, to maybe stop the run. But we saw it last year with Jamal Adams. He he overcommits. That also creates gaps in the run game, and, and people just kind of run rampant on this Seahawk defense that 
many fans thought, including myself, was going to be decent enough to limit teams in certain games. And like the Saints aren't that great, right? They they just matched up tremendously well against Seattle. And Seattle really just, again, is showing that the offense is not the problem this year. It's, it's the defense. And schematically, they look outmatched. They continually give up big plays. And if you have a competent running back and a competent tight end, as we've talked about on other shows throughout this season, you're going to do pretty well against the Seahawks because for some reason they cannot stop those two players, a, a running back that knows how to do it and a tight end that just can find the open space. Taysom Hill, unfortunately, can do both of those things, and he did it a lot on Sunday. And um, Seattle continues to struggle. The storyline, again, is is not the offense, but but rather the, their defensive play. Now I'm going to take a look here at the new offensive system with, with Kenneth Walker III. I think that a, a lot of fans are, are hearkening for Walker to continue to, to grow in this team, even before the Penny injury, right? He's, he's shown flashes of brilliance as Pete is slowly bringing him into this offense. But now we're going to see the rookie from Michigan State take all of RB1 snaps, probably, I would venture to say, about 90% of third down running back snaps. And this team's going to have to figure out if, if Kenneth Walker's the real deal. And he was very explosive in college. Um, certainly has a, a lot of good upside. But uh, now teams are going to strategize against what Seattle looks like with Kenneth Walker at the helm. Uh, an example can be seen on that 69 yard touchdown run where that play was designed to go one way and walker had the vision to quickly cut the opposite direction and his explosiveness led him uh, down the field for a touchdown if you can limit cutback lanes I i'm very curious to see how walker gets those tough yards in between the tackles kind of dragging guys with him um, we, we saw a little bit of that on Sunday, but that's got to be more of his game as, as we move forward because not every play is going to be a big cut back and run to the house play. I, I think of Saquon Barkley, right? That was a big part of his game in college. And although now this year he's tearing things up, uh, the first couple years of his NFL career was not great in, in terms of those explosive run plays that we saw often at Penn State because he always wanted to just dance and get by and sometimes you just gotta lower your shoulder drag a couple guys gain four yards and move on and um, I'm curious to see if Walker can can really put his head down and and make that adjustment as we move forward with what will probably be a, a more pass-heavy offense now for Seattle moving forward. I think that's unfortunate uh, because Geno Smith should not be trying to throw the ball 55 times a game. Um, but he will have to manage the workload of this rookie running back. Again, you're going to have DJ Dallas come in every now and again. And Travis Homer, I'm sure they're going to try to bring back gently from injury. So you, you don't want to rush him back in any way. But uh, Seattle very well might be in the free agent market for, for a running back that's sitting out there. Um, we'll, we'll just have to see. Our third takeaway from from this 39-32 to 32 loss is that uh, again, just like last week, I want to talk about the coaching. This team has issues, and they're glaring issues. And they're issues that can be easily seen in tape. This team has little fight on defense until you get in the red zone and back them up against the wall. And all the time, since the Legion of Boom era, we have heard that Pete Carroll is one of the best defensive-minded head coaches in the NFL. And he brought on some offensive gurus and, and Shane Waldron and company to, to really balance himself out, right? Pete's this defensive-minded genius. Where's the, where's the proof in all that? Because um, I'm not seeing it. It's not even close. Um, in fact, I'm seeing a defensive unit that's holding this team back. 
Seattle scored 32 points on Sunday. They still lost. It didn't matter. The point of the matter is, is that when you score 32 points in the NFL, you're supposed to win the football game. When your offense plays as well as they've done under Geno Smith, of all people, your defense is supposed to step up every now and again to get a stop. Especially against teams like New Orleans that just walk out there and do the same thing over and over again. When Taysom Hill's on the field, guess what? He's probably going to run it. When Taysom Hill lines up at tight end, guess what? You should probably double him. When you have defensive linemen dropping back into coverage, trying to cover guys that are much more athletic than they are, you're going to get burnt. I, right? I, I don't care if it's new, new Osu uh, coming over from the Chargers, uh, trying to do both, right? Either make him a speed rusher or, or make him a pass coverage linebacker. Don't make him do both, right? You can't be a, a, a jack of all trades and a master of none in the NFL, apparently, unless if you're Taysom Hill. And this Seahawks defense is not filled with a bunch of Taysom Hills. They're not talented enough to do all the things correctly. We've seen that even with Jamal Adams as he tries to be a linebacker and he tries to be a safety. And when he tries to be a safety, he often gets burnt. Heck, I, I saw a play on Sunday where Quandre Diggs was up in the box. And guess what? He whiffed on a tackle in the box, and it led to a New Orleans touchdown. Um, you have to just plug the players in to their natural positions where they are handy and work on their craft. Don't make them do 10,000 things to try to uh, shore up another position group. And that's what Pete Carroll's been about for years. Heck, we saw Nick Bolor, our fullback, play linebacker in the preseason. Come on. At some point, somebody's got to hold Pete Carroll accountable as this defensive guru genius that everybody's saying he is and go, where's the proof? Where do I see uh, results? And ultimately, that's that's what I'm waiting to see as a, as a Seattle Seahawks fan. And the schedule does not get easier. Uh, Seattle plays Arizona next week. Kyler Murray, Murray has had his struggles, right? But Seattle doesn't match well against that unit either. So it, it's going to be a struggle. But I, I am hopeful that this team does get back to 500. In my prediction video, I said that they'd bounce around at 500 for quite a while. And uh, they certainly have the potential to do that. But they really should have won this game. And all that it would have taken was a competent defense. And Seattle just squanders away another lead here late. Um, I love the competitiveness. I love the fight. I love going into a hostile environment and and being in the game at, at the end of the or at the end of the third quarter even, and and pushing towards in the fourth quarter a, a nice quality football game. Right? It turned out to be one of the better games this week. But you have to execute. You can't tell the fan base, hey, we're, we're not in a rebuilding mode. We're, we're in a retooling year. We're going to make a push. We want to keep winning. Okay, well, then win. Well, then show the team that you can step up and live into your philosophy as a run-first offense and a, a take-it-away physical in-your-face defense without getting flagged every other play, of course, which also happened on Sunday and execute a defensive game plan. I'm not seeing that out of this team. I hope and prove wrong in the next few weeks where Seattle's defense comes up to play because they really have a great offense right now. And I'd hate to waste these weeks where Geno's clicking and uh, the offense is doing very well for itself, only for the defense to give away very winnable games like this. But like I said, next week, Seattle gets to play Arizona in their effort to come back into the 500 club. I'm excited for that game. I hope you are too. Uh, our content schedule is over. Over there and uh, like I said we're gonna work through these OBS issues and try to get that content up and rolling this week but until we meet again uh, my name is Zach Talks Hawks and uh, if you like what you see please like comment and subscribe bye